Hi, this is Fred at Key Specialty Store. We've been talking with Mike about heating your garage with radiant floor heat. This is the second part of a three-part series, so let's listen in to see what Mike has to say about uh, where the boiler goes and uh, other considerations. Within an office area, and they are going to build an office area with a ceiling, and the boiler is going to be on top of the ceiling. On top of the ceiling? To conserve space. And also in a garage, it's nice to get the, uh, the uh, combustion above any gas fumes. Oh, so this could, oh, this could be a working garage. So, yes. okay, so, they, they'll, so they'll have a second floor up here. Yes, there'll be on top of the office area will be a floor that will house uh, storage and the boiler. Okay, so I see we've got water coming in here. There's a water mm -hmm. line coming in here that will feed the boiler, right? Yes, yes. He has, uh, the building has its own well system. And there will be a pressure tank in here also. And he's got conduit for electric to come in there or what? Yes. Okay, and he'll put electric panel in here and run electricity in here. Mm -hmm. So the boiler's going to be what kind? Will it be a gas or? Uh, this will be a gas uh, burning boiler. Okay. A power vented unit. Power vented, that's high efficiency, right? Uh, this is about an 84 to 85 percent. Okay. All right. Does, he, does this customer have his own gas well? This customer has his own gas Unlike well. Unlike most people in the city have to pay for gas, right? Yes. Okay. Well, let's tell you what. Let's take a walk down here and see what happens. Uh, so all these runs, man, this got to really get clustered over here, right? right? As that hot water comes out, that's going to be a hot spot right yeah, there, isn't it? a little bit warmer than average. That's where the cats sleep, Mike. That's where the dog or cat will sleep yeah. under the workbench. Okay. So we basically uh, run hot water at what temperature out of the... Boiler? Uh, the heat loss uh, that we produced for this calls for 110 degrees. So come out of the come out of the manifold at 110. Mm -hmm. They'll travel a distance of uh, 300 feet. 300 feet, and on its way out here, it heats the cement. Mm -hmm. and then it turns around and comes back, and it gets cooler as it comes back. Yes, it does. So the cold water or the cooler water goes back to, into the boiler to heat back up. To get reheated. Now I noticed. Uh, all these other places, they got all the way down in the end, they turned around and came back, but here, here it looks like we got a little short here. What happened? Uh, whenever you're using 300 feet, we want to stay, all the loops need to maintain the same distance so we don't create a short loop. A short loop will uh, consistently take most of the water flow. So to use up the 300 feet, uh, the homeowner had come down and it was coming to the end of the roll and he ended here and had taken the roll back so it would end up back at the manifold. Now this is half inch uh, PEX tubing, or uh, yes. what is generically called PEX. I think this is actually made by PERT, PERT, P-E-R-T. Oil Creek Plastics. Oil Creek Plastic, and that's a really tight curve there. I mean, that's, uh, you have to be careful, you, have to, you don't crimp that, huh? Typically you can get a one foot radius. And if you look there, that's about one foot across the curve of the pipe. Yep. Now, uh, some people have uh, suggested you get wider, bigger tubing to get more heat. Uh, is that a possibility? Uh, typically, what you gain on a, larger, on a larger tube is you carry more water. So what that does for you is it allows you to run a longer loop than 300. Okay. You're carrying more liquid, uh, you get a little more uh, time in the pipe. So okay. you can run a slightly longer loop. Now, uh, underneath this...